Ladies and gentlemen, welcome also to our audience viewing this press conference here on live stream. This is the first press conference of Friday afternoon, day three of the World Economic Forum's 2015 annual meeting. This one has a distinct regional flavor to it, a Latin America flavor to be more specific. We're here to uh, announce the, uh, the, the launch of a, a report, uh, a considerable study and, and indeed an ongoing project um, uh, being led by the World Economic Forum on bridging the, the gap in skills and innovation in Latin America. I'm going to waste no more time um, other than to introduce my panelists who will present and discuss the World Economic Forum's latest recommendations for the region in terms of skills and innovation, and perhaps discuss some of the best practices that the report has uncovered and offer some perspectives on how, uh, how these learnings um, and these insights can be taken forward and carried by the public and also the private sector to um, deliver meaningful outcomes in terms of uh, growing innovation and employment in the region. So over to my first guest, uh, very delighted to be able to um, introduce Margareta Drenia Canus, who's a director, lead economist in the Global Competitiveness and Risks team of the World Economic Forum. Margareta, perhaps talk us through some of the findings of this report. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Uh, indeed, it's a project um, which was uh, done by the Global Competitiveness Team at the World Economic Forum together with Deloitte, which has been ongoing since 2013. So we're launching today the first set of, uh, or the set of recommendations that this project came up, came up with. The objective was to pr provide actionable recommendations to close the competitiveness gap um, in, uh, in Latin America, in the areas of skills and innovation, because these are areas that are particularly difficult for the region and where the gap is particularly big. Uh, it was this work that's based on the Global Competitiveness Report of the World Economic Forum, as well as uh, some practices that we have collected from, from other regions. We've been working with a multi-stakeholder steering board, and actually uh, two members of the steering board are here, are here today to present their real results with us, so they've been guiding the work, um, representatives of public sector, private sector, um, in order to, to have a well-grounded well set of recommendations. Uh, the challenge that we are addressing here through this work is the fact that Latin America's growth has been stagnating over the past years after the commodity boom has slowed down. And what we, what we have uh, seen is that actually one of the reasons why this has been the case and why also the projections are not very positive for Latin America is that um, there's a productivity gap which has been um, emerging, which is becoming bigger uh, in, in the region. Uh, which is and, and this this development is not is, is so the, the gap became much bigger than in other regions such as for example Asia. So we're looking at we see competitiveness as productivity, and hence um, this work this link to the work on on competitiveness. The the project came up with a set of ten recommendations, and there is a separate report which is published on the website, and those are grouped in six priority areas, and we don't see them as. Uh, as in independent recommendations, but rather as a, as a set, as an entire framework of priorities that are highly interconnected. Priority number one um, is to strengthen the framework conditions, to continue actually strengthening the framework conditions. And here, in particular, in the areas of uh, regulatory legal environment, so this con needs to be continued to be strengthened, access to capital for firms, which remains very, very difficult for Latin American, for Latin American companies, um, and uh, uh, competition, so the level of competition, the stronger level of, co of competition would be, would be f uh, valuable and would be beneficial for competitiveness, and, and ICT. And all those aspects are framework conditions because they will influence to which degree Latin America can close the innovations and the skills gap. Then the first, the first direct recommend, uh, priority area to, um, to close the innovations and skills gap is really to enhance the efficiency on, uh, of investment and also to increase the level of investment. So these are two priority areas that we were looking at. The, um, first of all, the efficiency of the existing investment is fairly low. Uh, and our recommendation in this respect is to to um, strengthen the effectiveness of, um, of current policies and current investments by simply strengthening the capacity within the governments to, to evaluate policies, to evaluate ex ante and ex post in order to be, to be able to target them better and to, to increase the institutional capacity within the government to, to be able to, to do this type of work because then the investments and the policies would be much more efficient. The second recommendation in order to enhance the efficiency is to, to better align um, the investments to, to uh, economic and social priorities. What we have seen is that some of the investments are, are not well aligned, in particular when we look at championing value <coughs> chains. The selection is not, not always very transparent, and a system of better aligning 
uh, the the investments to to those priorities uh, would en enable those those investments to have an even higher higher impact. In addition to better um, better channeling or better better using existing investment, there's a need to increase the level of private investment in in those type of programs. So here in in so in particular in skills and innovation development, and here um, one measure would be, for example, to help. SMEs harness better um, existing capital. Innovative SMEs have very, very hard time in Latin America to access capital, and um, the government could do a lot more to help them harness this capital. Um, one of other possibilities would be also suggestions would be to um, to include venture capital uh, components into collaboration, public-private collaborations, for example. Overall, public-private collaboration has been has been an important topic and an important part of the recommendations as well. So this is our fourth priority area to strengthen public-private collaborations in the region. And in the first place, you know, this is related to the level of trust be between the two, two two sectors as well, which can continue to be to be built uh, to, be, to be increased. Um, first of all, th and th there are three recommendations with respect to to building stronger public-private collaborations. They are very very concrete um, and very much focus on on innovation and skills. First of all, to create a standardized catalog of research competencies. So that these are mainly public institutions, so that the private sector can indeed access more easily this information and be and, and f identify the, the the opportunities for um, of that are produced by the by the public sector through the research um, capacity that's existing. This could be then complemented also by um, research and skills development funding schemes in order to be, make it even more impactful. Um, and such schemes could be integrated into the catalog so that. The commercialization time is much shorter, and that the private sector can commercialize the, the breakthrough ideas much much faster. Um, then there is also a need, and, and there is a very strong public-private component in this area, to have a, um, a stronger focus on cross-sectoral um, vocational education. Uh, voc um, vocational education is actually well regarded, fairly well regarded. So there's a good performance of vocational students in Latin America, but there's still a significant skills gap. So companies are not able to to find the right resources um, in terms of vo uh, vocational education. And here, a very close collaboration in order <coughs> to really adjust the skills to the <coughs> needs of the business community would be beneficial. The fifth area of priority um, would be to foster interregional co cooperation. And here, um, two very concrete also suggestions are, one is to, to establish a m regional multi-annual research and innovation fund, so a longer term in research and innovation fund, to allow also faster commercialization across the entire region of research projects. So this is one, one recommendation. And the second recommendation in this area is to simply establish an exchange program for students and for researchers in Latin America in order to increase the pool of researchers and also increase the allocation between the different, different countries. And then our, our last priority area, and this is more of a cross-cutting area, this is more the how do we implement this recommendation, is really to, to employ a, a flexible implementation approach. So a flexible implementation approach meaning that we smart, start, start rather small and then build those recommendations out um, increasingly in order to, to be able to adjust and to be really on target all the time and also to leave, give the opportunity, especially at the regional level, other, of other, to other countries to opt in into the programs in order to keep it beneficial for the entire region. I'll stop here and give back to, to Oliver. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, next speaker, John Levis, the Global Chief Innovation Officer and Regional Managing Director for the Americas region at Deloitte. John, you've been a project advisor on this, um, on this initiative. Please share with us to date some of your, your key findings and the, the key, key recommendations that resonate for you and your firm. Sure. And first, I want to thank the World Economic Forum and the steering board for allowing Deloitte to participate and sponsor this program. I think our involvement has been truly beneficial for, for us, and hopefully we brought, uh, brought value to, to the process. Uh, the whole notion of competitiveness uh, in, in Latin America is one of keen interest, uh, literally around the world. Uh, and and uh, we know that leaders want to move past just discussing the issue that exists there to to real action, and we think this opportunity uh, does. Uh, excuse me, this report uh, provides us with exactly that opportunity, um, and and the timing is absolutely right. Um, innovation is increasingly at the heart of uh, what happens uh, to grow businesses and to grow economies. 
uh, without it, uh, economies uh, just flatten out. And, and we see that in, in various uh, locations around the world. And so being able to translate uh, an understanding of the gaps that we've seen into uh, tangible actions and recommendations, I think, is, is, is paramount here. Throughout the analysis, I think we've found that uh, one of the very important keys is the cooperation of the private and public sectors in, uh, in these recommendations, both in the work to identify uh, the issues uh, as they've been done and then in implementing tangible steps uh, to close those gaps. Um, and, and all of the recommendations touch on that, but there's one in particular that I want to highlight that gets right at the core of it, and that is Recommendation 4, which, is, which calls for the increase uh, of investment by the private sector into uh, closing the skills and innovation gaps uh, that exist in Latin America. And, and I think it's incumbent upon the private sector uh, to do that for a couple of reasons. One, the opportunity uh, is significant. Uh, and, and as a private sector motivated by the things that we're motivated by, being able to encourage um, a greater cooperation uh, amongst uh, uh, public and private sector and to encourage uh, institutions to make the right decisions around how to prioritize education, how to prioritize policies around uh, infrastructure uh, is, is absolutely necessary. Uh, small to medium businesses which need that innovation growth need to come and be fueled by what happens and the investments made by large organizations. And, and the economy sort of generates uh, it itself uh, through that way. And we've seen that through our work in other parts of the world, in Australia and in Europe, and increasingly in the things that Deloitte has been able to do uh, in, in Latin America. And for, in, you know, for one, one example about that is, is the work we've been doing with the social progress uh, imperative. Uh, and, and, and in doing that, identifying exactly the right way to measure social progress. It's the social progress index. It was, um, uh, you know, pioneered uh, in, a, in a way to, to truly measure uh, the growth in a society, not just in terms of financial terms, but how the growth in financial terms is benefiting society a, a, as a whole. And by creating national uh, network of partners in Latin America, we've been able to help specifically in countries like Brazil, the implementation of SPI and making that a, a way in which uh, uh, nations can measure uh, their innovation, measure their progress uh, in closing the gaps that we've talked about. And so just in, in conclusion from my side, uh, I, I'm looking forward to this report, its publication. I, I think that it, it tackles exactly the right issues around uh, skills gaps and education gaps, as well as the, the infrastructure gaps around innovation. And the recommendations, I feel, are extremely tangible, ones that can be actioned upon quickly uh, with results that I think can be equally quick. Thank you, John. And I would just say that this, uh, this report, uh, the, a press release related to it is, is now available on our website, weforum.org. It's available in three languages, English, uh, Portuguese, and Spanish. So uh, any media watching this uh, live on our webcast platform uh, can go to our website and, and download that release, get some more information. Now I'm going to move right on to Diego Milana Vega, the Minister of Information, Technologies and Communication in, of Colombia. Please, sir, give us some insights from the private se from the public sector. What resonance does this have, and, 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 and which of these recommendations do you think are uh, particularly relevant and you will be able to act on in 2015? You know, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank the, the World Economic Forum for, for, for the report. It's been a, a great job. Uh, fortunately, it is not done yet. I mean, it, this is just one step. Uh, but it is a fantastic step that really uh, is giving us some light on, on how to move in terms of increasing the competitiveness of, Ameri of Latin America. Look at Latin American economies have lived out of commodities in, in you know, for many, many years. We export oil, coal, copper, mm -hmm. you know, kind of commodities, but that's not sustainable. We have to move to other areas. We have to transform our economies in more competitive economies. And innovation is key to do that. Uh, and the report, you know, gives us two elements, two important elements. You have to innovate. That's key. And the government has to support that innovation. And a key element there, the private sector is the one that has to innovate. And the government should support that. In the case of Colombia, 
you know, we apply uh, this idiom, which is, you know, put your money where you put your mouth. We are going in that direction. So President Santos said, we have to transform our economy. We are going to invest in innovation. How? We are exporting a lot of commodities. 10% of all the money we get from the, those exports goes to innovation funds. So we are investing a lot of money in innovation. And, and we have to, to, to make sure that that innovation tackles not only basic research and development, but also productivity in, in business, especially SMEs. But also, uh, the other issue of the report is key here, which is talent. Without people, we can't do anything. So I'm really glad to see for the first time in Latin America a gap analysis on talent. What kind of talent we need for, to mm -hmm. transform the competitiveness of Latin America. It is uh, of great value, the results of this report, because now we can focus together the public and the private sector on creating that talent, on transforming our education system, on improving our vocational uh, education to make sure that we have the right manpower to, to increase uh, productivity. And in, in order to do that, there is one key element that we have to build, trust. Trust between the public and the private sector, because these tasks have, have to be uh, done by the two parts, and also trust with the academia, trust with the universities. So there are three players, the public sector, the private sector, and the universities, and we have to build trust. Thank you. Last but not least, Alejandro Ramirez, Chief Executive Officer of Sinopolis in Mexico, formerly a young global leader of the World Economic Forum. We just heard the minister say that it's the uh, governments must support the private sector in innovation. Give us your take from the private sector. Well, thank you very much. And I also want to um, commend the World Economic Forum and the team, uh, including Deloitte, for what I think is a, a very um, a deep and very pragmatic uh, report. Um, I think um, uh, I, overall I like very much that it decided to focus on the, on the skills and innovation gap um, because, as, as we all know, there are different pillars of productivity. And, the pillar that is the weakest in Latin America is precisely skills and innovation, and um, and I think um, I, I, we can you know we're generalizing Latin America is many countries but you know I think uh, if we look at it as a as a region, uh, one thing that we can say is that our educational systems have failed to produce enough uh, trained students or uh, with the right skills with enough skills. And I think something where the private sector can actually come in and, and uh, um, help and, and contribute is um, having a closer link with the universities and institutions of, of uh, research uh, and higher education institutions in general so that we uh, make sure that uh, what they are teaching are the right skills and mostly the relevant skills that we need uh, to actually pass that um, a, a phase of producing commodities, as uh, Minister Molano was, was saying, and become uh, uh, societies that are, you know, um, uh, the engines of growth are manufacturers and services. So I think um, uh, another area where the private sector can actually add value is in enhancing uh, vocational education and training programs and providing internships and apprenticeships. I think that's uh, also something that is very relevant to close the gap between, you know, what the universities are teaching and what the um, uh, private sector needs as uh, trained workers. Um, Another thing uh, we can do is collaborate uh, more with public research institutions uh, in, in fact, in, in doing joint research and development. I think that's something that uh, has started in some countries, in Mexico and Chile, you see some uh, private-public partnerships in doing uh, uh, R&D. And uh, uh, another critical component is actually supporting uh, small and medium enterprises, because we must say that not all of, uh, uh, not all of the productive sectors in Latin America are as equally, you know, unproductive or, or have this uh, productivity gap. I mean, there are some sectors in, for instance, the Mexican economy that are very produ highly productive and very well integrated into the North American economy, like the automotive sector and el the electronic sector. But then you have uh, some sectors that are very, very uh, far behind with very low productivity, and especially 
the small and medium enterprises. So um, something that we're seeing, for instance, the, the Mexican Council uh, uh, on Business, uh, Consejo Mexicano de Negocios, is uh, actually having a, a big, big uh, uh, program to try to link with the small and medium enterprises as, as suppliers of uh, you know, the larger uh, uh, conglomerates and to integrate them into the, into the value chain. Um, finally, something that, uh, that I think is critical, and, and it, it uh, is related to recommendation number two on enhancing policy effectiveness. Something that the private sector can do and must do is um, become a watchdog you know, for the effectiveness of educational policies. I mean, the, I, I think the, the, the uh, Achilles fee, uh, heel of Latin America is the low quality of public education. And also, I must say, private education. I mean, the, in general, you know, if, if you look at standardized tests like the PISA examination of, of the OECD, uh, Latin American countries rank very low compared to other countries of similar income level. And, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, if mo all of Latin American countries, including Chile and Uruguay, which are the best performing ones, uh, uh, around 40% of the students uh, rank zero or one in the math and science examination. So, uh, uh, and going up to, you know, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we all do pretty bad, but uh, if you look at the rank in Latin America, is the best performing ones is Uruguay, Chile, Uruguay, then Mexico, Argent uh, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, and Peru. So we're all doing very bad. And if you look at the number of 15-year-olds that rank in excellent in levels five and six in this examination, it, it, other than Chile and Uruguay that have a 2 and 3%, the rest of Latin America, less than 1% of 15-year-olds rank in excellence. So how can we produce you know, engineers, uh, high-quality scientists, when we don't have the raw material, which is well-educated you know, uh, 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 elementary and secondary school uh, graduates? So um, I think something that uh, many, country, many uh, businessmen in, in several countries are doing is actually getting involved in public policy, which I think is very important. You know, there's uh, the example of Mexicanos Primero in Mexico. You have Todos por la Educación in Brazil. Uh, and what they do is actually, um, you know, applied research. Uh, they also socialize the knowledge that they have uh, to, to actually uh, pass the message that we're actually not getting uh, good quality education because mm -hmm. surprisingly many uh, parents don't know, uh, then uh, public policy proposals and advocacy and lobbying. And I think that is critical, you know, for, um, you know, recommendation two of enhancing policy effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, uh, we've, we've, we've gone across a whole suite of recommendations and ideas and, and insights there from, uh, from freeing up money from commodities to, to channel directly into, into education. How can we get a multiplier effect there? Lots of priorities. We don't have very long, uh, and we uh, are a Swiss organization that prides itself on its timing, so we must <laughs> finish on time. But, but much of this is a long-term uh, report. Let's focus a little bit on the short term. I'd just like each of you, um, if, 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 if you will, to just give us a very, very brief outline of your top priority in 2015 for bridging this skills and innovation gap from your own unique perspectives. If you could have one priority, well, we've, we've gone through quite a few. Well, I'll just say that uh, in my case, because I'm Mexican and I do participate in a, in a uh, uh, NGO of businessmen that has been active pushing the, the educational reform for the past eight years. Now that the educational reform was passed by the Mexican Congress, uh, our priority is the implementation of the reform because there's a great resistance of the teacher unions in three Mexican states, and we, we, we were there to watch that the reform is implemented. You know, in Colombia, the same same case, education, education, education. We need to, to create a workforce with the right skills. Um, and so we have to define what those skills are and, and, and the systems on how we can really educate people with those skills. And at Deloitte, it would be easy for me to say those two things, and I think, I think we would. But I, I'd also add that there's a great opportunity for countries in Latin America to learn from each other. Um, not all of the challenges have to be solved in every country. And the good things that are being done in Colombia, you know, could easily be replicated in Mexico. And the best things done in Chile could be uh, helped in, uh, be helpful in, in uh, Panama. Uh, that's the spirit of innovation. Find someone's really good idea, make it a little bit better, and then make it your own, and then someone else will do the same thing. So greater collaboration across the region will, I think, also be a priority. 
and I would say, you know, the greater the improving the capacity within the within the within the public sector to uh, to um, to implement policies and to to um, to uh, and, and, and enhance the value of investments would be very important because on anything else we do is going to be influenced by this capacity, um, so we will have a greater impact even. Thank you very much indeed. Well, uh, fascinating. I wish you all the best uh, with the ongoing continuation of this initiative. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thank you to our audience watching here live and online. We'll be uh, right back in under just under three minutes for our next press conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.